Good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday to you guys. Uh, Gustina, you were first on today. Good for you. Good morning. Teresa, good morning. Mike, Amy, Joe and Charlene, Linda, good to see you guys. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody is well rested. And um, I just want to say thank you guys to to all of you who helped get those CCA packets done. Um, that was a humongous help. And we appreciate your time Saturday and Sunday um, being able to help us do that. It was just awesome. I know we're going to have some happy kids. And isn't it a, a blessing to be able to, to do that? So uh, good morning to Stacy and uh, let's see. And then Janet uh, left me a message and said that she is having a, a spinal injection tomorrow. So we will be definitely praying for you. All right. Okay. Good morning, Rick. Welcome back. We're, well, I hope your trip went really well. And uh, glad to have you back on this morning. All right. So we are on day 142 in our Lion Bites uh, book by Emma Stark. And this is titled Training Your Faith for Increase. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew seventeen twenty. For we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I saw you in a boxing ring, punching the air and skipping from foot to foot as you began to work up a sweat and get yourself ready. And as I watched you, I heard the Lord say, it's time to train your faith for increase. The Lord has brought you into a practice ring, a zone where he is inviting you into a faith training and faith stretching regime. There is something your faith there is somewhere your faith can increase to believe for all that God asks of you. The intense training regime is about choosing to believe even when something in you doubts. It's about choosing to say, I know God can heal that illness, even if you're not really sure yet if he can. You increase your faith by stretching your faith beyond what you think is possible. Increasing your faith is both about choice and action. It's about saying, I choose to believe I will, and I will act accordingly. 
Making these declarations regularly will help you raise your faith in God. My faith is increasing. I believe that you are God of the impossible. I believe mountains move at your name. I believe mountains melt like wax before you, God. I believe that with one touch, you change everything. And then you might just fill in this particular, these couple of sentences. I decree that the mountain of whatever is, is, whatever seems like a mountain in your life is shifting. And I decree that the mountain of whatever it is in your life that seems like a mountain is melting. And those last little declarations that we read, those, that's all scripture. And um, we know the power of praying scripture. We know that when we pray scripture, we're just repeating God's words back to him. Words that are already his will. Now, what we're going to read about here in our uh, scriptures talks about expectations and how our expectations of God might be different from the way that God wants to bless us or the what God wants to do with us. Um, and so I think that always we have to be praying for God's will, for him to show us what his will is, for us to be willing to do some things um, that may be different, that may look strange, that may people around us may not necessarily approve. Um, and that's never fun. But if we'll move in, in the direction of God, if we'll, if we will allow him to guide us and we'll move in that direction, then I believe that we will see blessing. And like I said, it may show up in ways that's very different from the way you imagined it. But, it, but it, you know, when it comes from God, it's going to be good because he gives us the best, right? So uh, be encouraged today and take those, those steps of faith and declare the uh, that the things that look like mountains in your life that they're nothing for God. They may be mountains for you, but they can melt and they can fall at the just the the um, sound of God's voice. So turn uh, turn these things over to the Lord. Trust in Him. Take the steps that you sense He is moving you in, and see what God will do. O oh Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you just as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and amen. All right. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Susan. And good morning, Erica. Erica, I hope you had an amazing retreat. And we missed you in church, but we're glad that you're back on this morning. All right, so our passages today, our first one is in Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter 11, starting in verse 31. And just to kind of catch up, and for some of you who uh, were not on Sunday morning uh, because you were out of town or had other things going on, we just finished reading last on Sunday, uh, last week, basically, or the start of this week. We read about how the people were grumbling. They were upset with God because uh, they wanted more than just the manna that God was providing, that what he was providing wasn't enough for them, that in Egypt they had meat and they had all of this, this delicious stuff to eat, and they wanted that now. So God said, okay. Meets what you want, meets what you're going to get. And uh, so um, he he promised that, but he was upset because here they were grumbling about what God had provided. So that brings us to where we are today. They They wanted meat. God said they'll get meat. So here's what happened. Now the Lord sent a wind that brought quail from the sea and let them fall all around the camp. For miles in every direction, there were quail flying about three feet above the ground. So the people went out and caught quail all that day and throughout the night and all the next day too. No one gathered less than 50 bushels. They spread the quail all around the camp to dry. But while they were gorging themselves on the meat, while it was still in their mouths, the anger of the Lord blazed against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. So that place was called Kibroth Hadava, which means graves of gluttony, because there they buried the people who had craved meat from Egypt. 
from Kibroth Hadava, the Israelites traveled to Hezroth, where they stayed for some time. So here's the, I think, the lesson in this. We do the same things, right? Sometimes we just want more. We want different. We get dissatisfied with the things that God gives us instead of being grateful. And he may accommodate our desires. He may put it there. Um, but what we do with it is, um, is up to us. So the people, because they wanted this so much, they just gluttonless, gluttonously, is that a word? It is, I guess it is right now. They, uh, they just absolutely gorged themselves, stuffed themselves literally to death. And so they, they died there and it was, you know, basically God saying, okay, you want what you want, what you want. Well, here, here's what you're going to get. You're going to get what you want, but what you're going to find out is that what you wanted wasn't necessarily the very best thing for you. And so the same can be said for us. We have to be very careful, I think, um, or at least I know I do. I can only speak for myself, but to 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 not start wishing for everything else, because there have been times in my life where I have wished for things that I then wished I'd never gotten because it wasn't good for me or because it took more time than what I really needed to give to it. Um, you know, for example, we may wish for a bigger house. Well, we may get a bigger house. Then there's a lot more to take care of. We may want, um, you know, I don't know what it would be. Um, we, our hearts desire maybe to travel a whole lot, but it may put some, some strain on our finances if we do that. You know, there are times when we should just be grateful, I think, for what God's given us and to know that he's always going to give us good things. Um, but um, when we start wanting something beyond what he sees is good for us to have, then we may just get it, but we may suffer some consequences as a result. So I don't know. For me today, when I read this earlier, I thought, you know, I just need to be grateful for what I have. And I need to, instead of asking God for all of this stuff, I just need to, I need to walk where I'm at. I need to, to, you know, this can be not just about stuff. This can be about, um, where you are in life. You know, you may think, oh, I thought by this point that I'd be in a different spot in my life. I hear, you know, some p corporate people saying that sort of thing. But this that's not where God wanted you to be. God wanted you to be right where you are. And so be grateful in that place, right? Um, maybe you think, oh, I wish I'd had 12 more children. <laughs> um, and, you know, be grateful for the one or two that you have instead of grumbling. So it can go a lot of different ways. But um, the uh, the point is, is that, you know, God does know what's best for us. And to be grateful for what he gives us rather than always wanting something else could mean the difference between life and death for us. All right. So let's go on to the next passage. This is Micah chapter four, starting in verse one. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of all, the most important place on earth. It will be raised above the other hills, and people from all over the world will stream there to worship. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. And there he will teach us his ways, and he will walk in his paths for the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion and his words will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will meditate between people. Will not meditate. I need to learn to read. Mediate. How about that? We'll learn to mediate between peoples and will settle disputes between strong nations far away. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will no longer fight against nation or train for war anymore. Everyone will live in peace and prosperity, enjoying the own great vines and big trees, for there will be nothing to fear. The Lord of heaven's armies has made this promise, though the nations 
Though the nations around us follow their idols, they will follow the Lord our God forever and ever. So basically, I I see this as um, pointing to the future, pointing to a time when there will be no evil, when there will be no war, when there will be unity and peace and uh, love and justice among us all. But of course, we know that this time has not come yet when we look around the world and when we see shootings in in malls like we had here over the weekend um, and the innocent lives, especially the lives of children that were lost in that incident. um, Then we know that that time hasn't come, but we're looking forward to the time when it does, when Jesus returns when um, evil is eradicated, when there is peace and unity and people and God's people live all as one under the rule of Christ. And, um, and so we look to that day. All right. Now let's turn to Luke chapter 22 uh, verses one through six. The festival of unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. Then Satan entered Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, and he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted, and they promised to give him money, so he agreed, and he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. So, this is kind of disturbing, right? This story, the the account of Judas, it's very disturbing to me, but at the same time, I can see myself in Judas, and let me tell you what I mean by that. So it says here that um, Satan entered into Judas Iscariot. Now, as children of God, typically Satan doesn't enter into us in the sense that he possesses us because the Holy Spirit is there. But if we give away to that, if we give way to the enemy, then there there is certainly that possibility. If we say we're going to put Jesus over here on the shelf then we open ourselves up for something because there there is going to be some sort of God of our life. So um, so this is basically Judas had been walking with Jesus in much the same way that we walk with Jesus. Um, he had been learning his teachings. He had been friends with him. Um, but then there was something that happened. And what I think happened is that he began to get his own ideas of how all this was going to take place. And here Jesus was discussing how he was going to die. And Judas was hoping that Jesus would come and he would set up his kingdom and all would be great. That's what a lot of people were looking for. You know, we talked about with the... um entry of in uh, his entry into Jerusalem and how he rides in on a donkey and that was not the expectation that people had of the king of kings i mean the worldly kings would come in in a more majestic way and they had servants and they had all this jesus was a servant jesus came to serve others so the expectation was different for people versus what it was for for Jesus. And so what I see is that Judas had his expectation and he got caught up in himself. He got caught up into thinking that his way was the right way. And how easy is that for us to do? We start thinking, well, I know how this is supposed to happen. This is what makes logical sense to me. I know how the church is supposed to work. I know how, you know, we're all supposed to do this because this has been done for as least as long as I've been alive. Never mind that there's a whole history before we ever entered the picture um, where there was a lot of different things that were happening. There's been a lot of changes over and over. Well, so when we look at this, Judas had this idea of this is what Jesus is going to do. So here's the thing. I'm going to go and I'm going to help this along. And I think that if I just go 
and I tell the, them where Jesus is, then that's going to force Jesus' hand, and he's going to stand up and be the Messiah that he is. And um, that's not what Jesus' plan was. Jesus had the the will of God, and he was going to carry out the will of God, even though it might look very different from the way people might expect it to happen. And so when we do that, when we get into ourselves, when we start playing God, then we say, okay, Jesus, you go sit down over there. And then while, while that place that Jesus should be occupying in us is open, the enemy will creep in. And before we know it, he will have hold of us. So that's that's how I see it with Judas. I, I see that he was overwhelmed with shame and guilt and um and and being consumed by the enemy at that point. Um then you know how easy is it to listen to the voice of the enemy that says, Hey, you just need to go kill yourself. You just need to go do this. You're you're worthless, you're useless. Um you know, it just makes you stop and think if things had been different, what if he had repented? What, you know, what would have happened then? I mean, Jesus came to forgive us, right? Um, I have, I, I think that, that Jesus would have shown him love, but you know, I, I don't know. The, the reality is God used Judas in that, you know, used what Judas would do. It was not that he caused him to do it, but he knew what Judas was going to do. And so it was it was just how it all came about. I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Maybe you have a different view on that. Um, but I just I see that so easily happening to any of us. It's so easy to get caught up in what we think needs to happen. And how many times will we manipulate situations and people because we think we're right? Because we think that we we've got this all figured out and everybody just needs to do it the way we would do it. So we'll just play this little game. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. All right. As we go to the Lord in prayer today, definitely we want to uh, pray for Janet um, for her procedure tomorrow. Um, and so def- definitely, Janet, you you know that we will be praying for you. We'll pray for you now. Um, also pray for the victims families um in that were the families of the victims of the shooting in Allen for all of those who saw what happened who heard the shots who were horrified by what was going on and certainly the community the community at large you know this was very close to home and um probably every one of us have been over there to that mall so um let's just you know, keep everybody in our, in prayer. Um, we continue to pray for those who grieve. We continue to pray for Mary Beth and her health. Continue to pray for Keith Melton healing from back surgery. Even though he's doing pretty well, we just continue to pray for him because we know that it's kind of a long process. Also, uh, Keith and Rosie will be getting married here in just about two or three weeks. So we want to definitely keep them in prayer as they inch closer to the wedding. Um, any other prayers? We need to pray for um, First Christian Church more um, and the transition that they are going through. Um, and we want to continue to pray for First Christian Church Burnet, um, for the ways that they're trying to get out into the community, the way that they're they're trying to work through some of the same things we all work through, right? Where we all have to figure out how do we do this? How do how do we get people out in the community? And some of us have the challenge of being more introverted to deal with, right, Susan? That's how I feel with uh, our MOPS program. So please keep MOPS in your prayers as well. Um, we have a meeting this Thursday. We've had a couple people inquiry uh, or inquire about it, but we, um, we're we just such a small group. And I, I sometimes think that when they come and they're just one person that it's a little intimidating. So it's kind of a slow start, but we just pray that God will continue to open doors just like he's opened those doors and that we will reach out and meet folks. Um, also pray for open arms, sober living. Um, they are, um, 
they have gotten a new resident uh, and they will be, you know, doing some other interviewing. So uh, just please keep them in your prayers, too, as they fill the house and as they all start um, building the relationships that they have with one another. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful Tuesday. We thank you that we're all safe. We thank you that you have provided in the most amazing ways. Help us to be satisfied with the things that you give us, the things that you blessed us with. And in those times, Lord, when we think we need something different, remind us that you are a good provider, that you provide us with everything that we need and more, and to just be satisfied, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will lead us and guide us, that you will continue to remind us that even though these are days of trouble, there is a time coming when Christ will return, when wars will be ended, when there will be peace and unity and justice. And I pray, Lord, that you will keep us from evil, that you will help us to keep our eyes focused upon you, that we will understand and be humbled by the fact that we do not have all of the answers. Help us instead to look to you and to trust you to walk with us wherever it is that you choose to walk with us, that you um, choose to walk us in those places that you desire us to go. And Father, when things become challenging because we we uh, don't know the way, we don't know what's at the end of this road, or we're doing something new, I pray, Lord, that you'll give us the courage to just burst out of that old shell and and fly into new what's new and what's what whatever it is that you're calling us to now. We pray, Lord, today for those who are recovering from surgery. We pray for Janet today, who will be having a procedure tomorrow. We pray for all of those families, Lord, that um, are suffering right now as a result of the loss of little ones, the loss of uh, life um, in older folks. We pray, Lord, that you will just continue to heal the city of Allen and the neighboring communities, as we never know what's going to happen in any particular day. We pray, Lord, that you will keep us safe, that you will place a hedge of protection around us. And as we go through the day today, that you will show us what you would have us to do, that you will give us courage to speak what you would have us to speak, and that in all things that we say and do, may it bring glory to you. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Surprise us with your joy, O Lord, and let it resound in all that we do. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing right back here in the morning. If any of you in this area would like to come join us at four o'clock this afternoon for a time of prayer, you come and you pray and uh, do whatever the Lord moves you to do. And then you're free to go whenever whenever you reach the end of that prayer time for you. Um, Very casual, but very um, special time with the Lord. So I hope that you will come and participate if you are able. Everyone have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.